one of the most infamous people and the most infamous crimes can probably be attested to Jeffrey Dahmer. I think Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most well-known murderers in, in United States history. Of course, there's tons of others, but the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer uh, not only killed 17 young boys and teenagers, uh, but the fact that he would do tons of bizarre things to their bodies, trying to make them zombie-like, really set him apart from basically anyone else. And this video is all about Jeffrey Dahmer. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is probably the most uh, requested and well-known of all the different videos I've done. So let's get into it. I'm guessing 90% of you know all about Jeffrey Dahmer, what happened, what he did. Um, so I'm not gonna delve in too deep into like what he did, um, but I'll give you the basics and then I'll show you guys where his old apartment was where he killed one of the victims, where the bar is, where he would basically pick up most of, uh, most if not all of um, the men that he eventually killed. And then of course the street where he would kind of go down and hang out at. So I'll show you guys uh, all the locations and go from there. Behind me is a Mitchell Park Horticultural Center. It just looked like a cool backdrop to kind of start this video out at. Just a really beautiful area, but I'm not that far away from where Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment was, where the murders took place, and some other locations nearby. So we're not that far away from, from all that. So Jeffrey Dahmer killed and dismembered 17 young men and boys from 1978 up until his arrest in 1991. Jeffrey Dahmer had lots of bizarre fascinations as a child. Um, you've probably heard a lot about it, but he would enjoy killing young animals and dismembering them and seeing what the inside of what an animal looked like. He kind of graduated from, from dismembering and killing little animals, uh, of course, to dismembering and killing humans. If you watch some of the interviews, he and his dad apparently both had some kind of weird and scary thoughts and feelings. Some people think it might have been like a genetic type thing, maybe, uh, as his dad had similar thoughts and feelings. Jeffrey Dahmer didn't always live in Milwaukee, but uh, he eventually settled here. What would become his famous apartment? where he ended up murdering uh, most of the victims and of course trying to turn some of them into living zombies. So on June 18th, 1978, Jeffrey Dahmer picked up a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks who was almost 19 at the time. Stephen Hicks would unfortunately become Jeffrey Dahmer's first murder victim. What's interesting is the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer actually didn't kill anyone else for nine years after that. 1987 is when Jeffrey Dahmer began his real murder spree. 1978, when he killed Stephen Hicks, um, that was the first one, but after that, he waited about nine years until he started his killing spree again. But that's probably due to many different factors. A um, couple couple interesting things I read was that Jeffrey Dahmer actually was in the army. He was there for about two and a half years or so. 
Uh, many men in the army claimed that they were drugged and raped by Dahmer and that Dahmer was drunk a lot. So he was dishonorably discharged from the army. Initially after Dahmer was dishonorably discharged from the army, they asked him where he wanted to go and they would give him a plane ticket. He didn't want to return back home at that point because he didn't want to disappoint his father for, for being discharged from the army. And so he ended up in Florida for a little while. Um, no known uh, murders or anything like that happened down there in Florida. He returned back home to Ohio and he lived again with his father and stepmother. That didn't last for long. He ended up uh, moving in with his grandmother in West Allis, Wisconsin, uh, 1987. And this is when his uh, actual murder spree really started to take off. Um, he ended up bringing many, many uh, boys and men home to his grandmother's house where he would drug them, rape them, and then kill them. His grandmother finally had enough of him bringing home all these young men and she basically kind of kicked him out. So on May 14th, 1990, Jeffrey Dahmer moved out of his grandmother's house and into his own apartment uh, located at 924 North 25th Street and the apartment was 213. Uh, so he moved from West Allis to Milwaukee. Again, after his move to his own apartment, the killings and rapes continued. So Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, murder and rape spree should have been stopped a long time ago before he was finally arrested on July 22, 1991. Um, there was many, many chances and opportunities for police to have arrested him sooner, but they didn't look hard enough. During the late 80s, Jeffrey Dahmer uh, was actually sentenced twice for uh, in, indecent exposure and actually was given probation, I believe, for the last time it happened. Um, five years probation. And in that probation, he was not supposed to have any contact with, yes, you can guess it, minors. So again, Jeffrey Dahmer probably should have been stopped a lot sooner, um, especially on the evening of May 26, 1991. Uh, on May 26, 1991, this is when uh, Jeffrey Dahmer met 14-year-old Conorak Synthsomophone. And this young 14-year-old Conorak was one of the many living zombies that he tried to make. So 14-year-old Conorak, even though he was uh, bleeding and had a hole in his head from Jeffrey Dahmer trying to drill into his head and pour acid into it, um, he had enough consciousness left to, to try to run outside and flag down uh, any officer he saw. They eventually did have some people call 911 and officers did show up, but unfortunately for Conorak, the officers that arrived assumed it was just a spat between uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and his boyfriend. Jeffrey Dahmer was calm, collected, and just said that Conorak was just drunk and just uh, his boyfriend and they used to have arguments all the time. So even though the witnesses nearby yelled and pleaded with the officers to look more into the case, um, the officers just let it off and said, oh, it's probably just some boyfriend spat. Jeffrey Dahmer was able to get Conorak back into his apartment and eventually kill him. But anyway, so like I mentioned, um, th there's so many details and uh, information about each and every murder. It would take me like, several hours to give you every single detail so I kind of just give you the highlights and then of course a couple of the main murders that that were more well known all right so this is obviously Shaker's bar this is the bar where Jeffrey Dahmer hung out at where he picked up about half of his victims that he ended up murdering and uh, this is not the only bar in the area uh, back in the the late 80s, late 80s to early 90s um, there was a whole stretch on this street um, that were mainly gay bars and so for, for Jeffrey Dahmer that was perfect. So he, he not only went to Shaker's Bar here and picked up people but he also went to a couple other bars along this main street. Uh, many of those bars are no longer in existence. This is kind of one of the only ones that has survived the test of time and as you saw earlier the mural it said 1894 so this has been around for over 100 years. The bar here also does like tours, um, but uh, they open at 5 p.m. and right now it's about noon, so unfortunately I can't hang around five hours just for, for the tour. Uh, it would be nice to get inside and show you guys the inside to kind of give you a better perspective, but I can't wait around five hours. I have lots of other things to do. 
So anyway, from here, we're gonna head off to the next location, uh, the Ambassador Hotel where Jeffrey Dahmer killed um, his, his second victim. So November 20th, 1987, Jeffrey Dahmer met uh, a guy named Stephen Tuwami, who was 25 years old. Um, he met him, took him back to the Ambassador Hotel here. And Jeffrey Dahmer initially stated that uh, he wasn't intending to, to kill Tuwami, but he woke up and Tuwami's chest was caved in. He was bruised, bleeding, and of course dead. Whether or not that's actually true or not, and he intended to kill him or not, I'm not exactly sure. This again was, uh, as far as I can tell, this was the, the second murder committed by Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, the first murder was nine years earlier. Um, he killed Stephen Hicks. Um, so this was the second murder nine years later. Uh, November 1987. This is this this is basically the catalyst that kind of uh, got Jeffrey Dahmer to continue his murder spree, and he ended up killing you know 17 people in total. So I made it to Jeffrey Dahmer's grandma's house where again he lived for a considerable amount of years um, before he moved out in 1990. So again he killed at least three of his 17 victims here at his grandmother's house. One of the other victims was again at the Ambassador Hotel. Grandma's house is located at 2357 South 57th Street. He lived there basically from when he got out of the army in 82. Um, to when he moved out in 90. So I believe he lived there for about eight years, 82 to 90, give or take. Um, his grandma basically just coddled him and gave him as much money as he needed. I believe he got a job as like a phlebotomist for a little bit, um, but for the most part, he kind of just bounced around from a couple jobs and or just hanging out drinking um, and uh, obviously raping and killing people. But um, the main job he had was, I think, at some sort of phlebotomy clinic. He worked there for a little while, but for, besides that, he uh, he didn't really have much consistent work. Located at 924 North 25th Street, this is where Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment was located. Um, his apartment number was 213. They tore down the, the apartment complex for pretty much obvious reasons, you know, that no one wants to live in an apartment where something that brutal happened. They're forbidden to build anything on top of this uh, due to what happened, so it's just a empty, empty grass uh, with the fence around it. But anyway guys, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I showed you basically all the spots that, that he hung out at or killed people at, so again, uh, I gave you uh, the more important details of everything. Um, if, you, if you again want to read up on him, just type in his name, you'll find literally dozens and dozens of other articles. I didn't want to bore you guys with a ton of different details, so I kind of just gave you the main, the main ones. Um, so I hope you guys still enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these kind of videos about crime related stuff, definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. Um, until next time, thanks again guys. My name is Harmon. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.
14 year old Conorak Synth. I can't even say his last name. Synth. Synth. Uh, Synth. Uh, uh, May 26th, 1991. This is when Jeffrey Dahmer met 14 year old Conorak Synth. Some phone. Synth. Uh, 